Practical Vedanta Part 4, Text 6 This network of karma we have woven around ourselves and in our ignorance we feel as if we are bound and weep and wail for help. But help does not come from without. It comes from within ourselves. Try to all the gods in the universe. I cried for years and in the end I found that I was helped. But help came from within. And I had to undo what I had done by mistake. That is the only way. I had to cut the net which I had thrown round myself and the power to do this is within. Of this I am certain that not one aspiration well guided or ill guided in my life has been in vain. But that I am the resultant of all my past, both good and evil. I have committed many mistakes in my life, but mark you, I am sure of this, that without every one of those mistakes, I should not be what I am today, and so am quite satisfied to have made them. I do not mean that you are to go home and willfully commit mistakes. Do not misunderstand me in that way, but do not mope because of the mistakes you have committed, but know that in the end all will come out straight. It cannot be otherwise because goodness is our nature, purity is our nature and that nature can never be destroyed. Our essential nature always remains the same. What we are to understand is this, that what we call mistakes or evil, we commit because we are weak and we are weak because we are ignorant. I prefer to call them mistakes. The word sin, although originally a very good word, has got a certain flavor about it that frightens me. Who makes us ignorant? We ourselves. We put our hands over our eyes and weep that it is dark. Take the hands away and there is light. The light exists always for us, the self-effulgent nature of human soul. Do you not hear what your modern scientific men say? What is the cause of evolution? Desire. The animal wants to do something but does not find the environment favorable and therefore develops a new body. Who develops it? The animal itself, its will. You have developed from the lowest amoeba. Continue to exercise your will and it will take you higher still. The will is almighty. If it is almighty, you may say, why cannot I do everything? But you are thinking only of your little self. Look back on yourself from the state of the amoeba to the human being who made all that, your own will. Can you deny that, that it is almighty? That which has made you come up so high can make you go higher still. What you want is character, strengthening of the will. If I teach you, therefore, that your nature is evil, that you should go home and sit in sackcloth and ashes and weep your lives out because you took certain false steps, it will not help you, but will weaken you all the more. And I shall be showing you the road to more evil than good. If this room is full of darkness for thousands of years, and you come in and begin to weep and wail, oh, the darkness, will the darkness vanish? Strike a match and the light comes in a moment. What good will it do you think all your lives? Oh, I have done evil. I have made many mistakes. It requires no ghost to tell us that. Bring in the light and the evil goes in a moment. Build up your character and manifest your real nature, the effulgent, the resplendent and ever pure and call it up in everyone that you see. I wish that every one of us had come to such a taste that even in the vilest of human beings we could see the real self within, and instead of condemning them, say, Rise thou effulgent one, rise thou who art always pure, rise thou worthless and deathless, rise almighty and manifest thy true nature. These little manifestations do not befit thee. This is the highest prayer that the Advaita teaches. This is the one prayer to remember our true nature, the God who is always with us, thinking of it always as infinite, almighty, ever good, ever beneficent, selfless, bereft of all limitations. And because that nature is selfless, it is strong and fearless, for only to selfishness comes fear. He who has nothing to desire for himself, whom does he fear and what can frighten him? What fear has death for him? What fear has evil for him? So if we are Advaitist, we must think from this moment that our old self is dead and gone. The old Mr. Mrs. and Miss so-and-so are gone. 
they were mere superstitions and what remains is the ever pure the ever strong the ever almighty and all knowing that alone remains for us and then all fear vanishes from us who can injure us the omnipresent all weakness has vanished from us and our only work is to arouse this knowledge in our fellow beings we see that they too are the same pure self only they do not know it we must teach them we must help them to rouse up their infinite nature this is what i feel to be absolutely necessary all over the world these doctrines are old older than many mountains possibly all truth is eternal truth is nobody's property no race no individual can lay any exclusive claim to it truth is the nature of all souls who can lay any special claim to it but it has to be made practical to be made simple for the highest truths are always simple so that it may penetrate every pore of human society and become the property of the highest intellects and the commonest minds of the man woman and child at the same time all these rationalizations of logic all these bundles of metaphysics all these theologies and ceremonies may have been good in their own time but let us try to make things simpler and bring about the golden days when every man will be a worshipper and the reality in every man will be the object of worship